So they're saying while he was trying to get the rebound, he was also trying to get the shot up. <laughs> All the guys in uh, neckties uh, suddenly uh, complaining on the side of Alaska. Oh, that's that's tough. So I thought either it could have gone either way. But one of the things. Ito si Daniels, uh, struggling from the free throw line. Game number one, only 50%. Now, zero out of two na naman siya sa free throw line. Not exactly the smoothest of free throw motions. Kita mo naman eh, no? Maybe he has to attend Richard Del Rosario's uh, free throw shooting clinic. Ano yun? Para lalong gumaba pa yung ano niya. And that's, you got teammates na yan. Eh. Masalam mo yan. <laughs> In the meantime, I think a little more... Well, wow, that won't count, I think. It's an offensive foul. Now, I believe Sam Emmon did not play in game one. In today's game, he's getting some some minutes already. In six minutes so far. Using the shoulder and throw, uh, putting that on uh, Rudy Hatfield. Rudy Hatfield knows he's not as big as Sam Emmon. But then you can move your feet and stay between the goal and the ball. And that's how you can get an offensive foul. Emman is a plumbing solution. <laughs> Lock the hole. And Kagiwa getting it to fall inside and making it 34 to 30. So far, he never outscoring Alaska 10 to 4 in the period. Hatfield agonizes and touches it last to Norio, where they tap. Well, if Norio's got in his hand in a lot of basketballs right now. Sam Emmons going to go to the bench. Uh, has been part of a number of turnovers, especially passes that are going to him. I have to bring in Sunny Thoth, who's been who's given a good account of himself in this game. Two out of two from the field, five points. You know, if your team don't, you've done your part. You've got a few uh, rebounds, getting the, the mix uh, going, continuing for us. They did do that badly <laughs> while the stars were on the on the uh, bench. That's the final na naman yung starting five. This is the five that really gets uh, that has been successful for their team. Tim Cohn wanting to make sure that his team finishes finishes this quarter strong. Mark Aguirre with the second foul. Players are moving in to a timeout. And they're winding on Kagiwa for, I think, complaining. And we have 3 and 38 remaining in a scoring uh, battle that's snailing along. We are so glad you could be with us on this Sunday. Sam Samantha and Jason Webb together with Chiki Reyes and Chesco Litton uh, from the Kaneta Astrodome in Pasay City. It's 34 to 30. I think the scoring pace and the way we're putting points on the board should be thematic, will be thematic for the series. It's going to be like this. I don't know. What do you think? Well, it, like, like we said, he never has a very good defensive team in terms of limiting the opponent's field goal percentage. But the problem is they don't cause turnovers and also they, have, they, they don't go down on defense very well. But, you know, what is always the key is limiting the opponent in terms of field goal percentage. And on the other hand, uh, to, to finish, Alaska uh, limits the number of possessions in a game because they don't really run so much and they milk the clock uh, with their offense. Absolutely. Mink was disappointed that he was banged and uh, got no foul there. That sequence, running shot on target for Bagia. Critical period for Barangay Never. They got this, they got back into this game because of a solid second quarter. Three minutes to go. This, this is where you know, you know people we really remember as they're gonna call a double foul <laughs> on Eric Mink and Sonny Foss, it seems. And both coaches are going berserk here, mildly at that now because there's a lot of shoving and pushing. Men trying to hold on because watch this. But, uh, this is almost in real time here. Arm lock on both players. <laughs> I, I think the uh, call is Solomonic. <laughs> Might as well call a foul on each guy. 
And maybe this... Iba, uh, iba yung, uh, yung angulo kasi natin, nasa likod eh. Uh, pero yung hawak kasi... <laughs> Kung sino yung humawak ang nagtanong eh. Ang, ang tanong pala eh. So, each foul sort of uh, negating, quote-unquote, the other. But it will count as a personal foul for each. But, but uh, in effect, that's actually good for Barangay Hinero because the ball was thrown out of play. At least they get another attempt. And right there, they get an offensive rebound and two points. All this reacting about Meng shows you Alaska's concern. They don't want men to get going uh, in terms of rebounding or any production going. Because there was that stretch before he got injured and Meng was going really berserk in the tournament. And, 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 when, you, and when you look at it, if you, if the our, if our tele viewers had seen Game 1, it seemed that Game 1, Eric Meng, wasn't, wasn't really... In the type of, in that type of mind frame that was very passionate. I guess so. Kita na natin, like we said, it, from top to bottom, it seems Barangay Hinebra really playing with much more passion compared to what we saw in game one. Chiki, please join us uh, about the last time. Thank you, Seb. You know, Coach Tim fielded in his second unit, hoping that this will give his starters enough time to rest. But after a series of miscues, he was forced to bring back his starters as their double-digit lead was cut down to single-digit. Coach Tim said that they have to regain back their flow. Hinebra is very aggressive in switching hard on defense. So he, he wants his aces to be aggressive in forcing their way to the basket to counter this, Seb. Thanks a lot, Chiki. And now, there's been a change in the mood of the defense of Alaska, they're bodying up, playing extremely physical, and Tenorio got the short end of the stick in that exchange against Kogiwa. This is the part where we talked about Alaska having to play with boys. But right now, this, this, is, this, 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 is, this is a concern. Obviously, this is becoming emotional, and an emotional game usually is in the favor of the Tin King. Love watching the coaches. So much on the line here. Daniels can't shoot straight, at least in this first half. Baguio says, I want to run. <laughs> you know what I always like the best, Baguio, even when he was in college. Okay, you can discuss all you want about the fouls and the problems about the officiating. I'll just run and shoot. And a foul in Kagiwa, that's a huge development in terms of um, the guard line of Hinebra. That's his third. Parangay to Cyrus Baguio. His number one concern is always to get in the open court. <laughs> Topex Robinson um, had a very brief stint, but uh, a big, big contribution with that basket in game number one towards the stretch. As we take a look at that free throw brought to you by BMEC, Derby is premium formula. Ito ka nasal Yamato. We're talking about Topex Robinson. You know, not only, he's such a good pickup in the sense that he's a good teammate. He's a guy that would cheer on the bench, so he's very positive. In terms of uh, just uh, even when he's not contributing on the floor. So bad. So bad. Now we've got a battle going on right now, and Daniels attacking inside, battling in the trenches. And right now, this quarter, in terms of rebound, mas marami na ino huwa ng Barangay Ginebra because they're big men being more active in attacking that glass. Alaska's managed to hang on to the lead. Biggest lead so far posted by the Aces when it was 12 points at 28 to 16. JC and Tal on the floor for the first time. Intal played five minutes in game number one at two points. And Tubek now brings his team within one as he has 12 points. This communication on the defense of Alaska and Barangay Hineva taking advantage of that. Another three-pointer for Ronald Tubek. And the Vance with an 11-point output so far. And very quietly, Joe DeVance actually being one of the better players for his team in the series. Game 1, 15 points. Here in Game 2, the top local scorer. 25 second mark. Approaching that one. Cut inside by Intal. So JC Intal, if, he can, if, if he's healthy, if he can get his minutes, actually very key for Barangay Hinebra because he is a three-man, a forward that has more size